in studio we have uh, she does so much she also runs a household she's a wife she's a mommy she's a daughter she's a sibling and uh, also the co-founder of an NGO now you can get now in a short time when I talk because you've heard about the NGO and the amazing work but what happens behind the scenes as well none other than Sadika Abdul such a privilege and such a pleasure assalamu alaikum and welcome Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I must say it does feel a bit weird just sitting here with me alone. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to enjoy the, the one-on-one conversation this morning, inshallah. I'm absolutely looking forward to it because yes, now it's not just about uh, wearing the co-founder of Fusion in Yamiko hat, we'll, which of course we'll talk a lot about simply because we know it's something that you're incredibly passionate about. I also just want to share with our listeners that the last time that Sadika was in a studio with us, uh, she was a about to give birth <laughs> that's so true that was literally uh, four months ago alhamdulillah yeah. so i do have a beautiful baby girl alhamdulillah her name is sophia so uh, yeah and she's um, the fourth isn't it she is the fourth one yes. alhamdulillah the baby um the other kids all dote over her alhamdulillah and um, she's like a little doll and um we 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 really lo- love having her in the space um because She just brings about, she's sick. I, I, as I walked in, I mentioned that she's yes, not feeling yes, too well. She's got a bit of a cold. Mm-hmm. But she's still smiling, alhamdulillah. Oh, alhamdulillah. And she's no, no. just four little, four month old baby girl. So, you know what one realizes that there's something really absolutely sacred. Especially the first few months of, of babies. Yeah. Uh, of, yeah. of babies, after baby's birth. There's something just really sacred. And it's so beautiful that you and your whole family that you actually Enjoy just uh, really it. taking it in yeah 100% um i think when my kids the other kids saw me being pregnant and and after that giving birth it completely changed for them you know because now they could see the transition from having you know the big tummy mm. and then the baby actually being there so they literally they're soaking it all in they love her to bits um they they to the point where they actually don't give her space to breathe <laughs> that's how bad it is um but alhamdulillah but that's how loved she is no no because i remember always my, as my as my granny used to say you know that you can't spoil a baby with love you can't you can't people always say that my mom is one of those ladies that says that especially to to uh, my husband is um because uh, he often carries her you know when she needs co- uh, consoling but i'm saying but that's how they feel loved you know yes i agree and there's nothing wrong with giving them too much love i absolutely i absolutely agree uh we want to yeah we want to talk also a little bit about your own background but you saying on that it now makes me think about our conversation earlier during our first segment uh we have this on the journey baby step segment and so mm-hmm. we had these ladies from the zoe project And today we were talking about when you bring baby home. Yes. So we've been going through the whole, you know, sort of getting pregnant and pregnancy and first time et etc. And so today we were talking about when you bring baby home. And so oh, that wow. came up how for some people the idea of no, baby's been fed, baby's been bathed, all of those things. So now even if baby cries, yes. it's okay. So they were saying exactly the same thing, but baby can't. I mean, studies show that, exa- that baby doesn't know how to be naughty at that point. You know, And I, I mention this often at times that as adults, we sometimes don't know how to process things. Mm-hmm. And with the result of that, we act out. So how do we expect little babies or even toddlers or, or, or our small children to be able to process what they're feeling mm-hmm. and communicate that to us? Yeah. You know, I, I, if like we struggle adult as words. adults. Exactly. So we can, my little four-month-old baby, <laughs> dog, I say, Sophia, tell me what's wrong so I can help you, so I can fix you. But, <laughs> but they, then as long as mommy and daddy holds her close, yes, yeah, so one, one of her siblings. And I mean, speaking of siblings, you are one of many siblings apparently, uh, Sadika. I am. I, we are six siblings altogether, alhamdulillah. Mm. I am the titi. Oh. But, yes, but I do have two older brothers, alhamdulillah, uh-huh. and two younger sisters and my baby brother, although he's miles bigger than what I am. He is, um, yeah, the baby. Uh. So he's very spoiled, mashallah. <laughs> As <laughs> so, babies are. So six siblings, so you also six. had a busy household. And I mean, clearly you have a busy home. There's four kids in yes. the house. So so I grew, grew up with, with six siblings. And I therefore, I also wanted uh, six children. Uh, until I had my second child, I was like, um, okay, alhamdulillah, I'm done now. <laughs> It's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> and then Allah blessed us with number three and number four. And because we um, struggled to fall pregnant, um, for us it only happened after seven years of marriage. Wow. So I was very grateful for number three and number four, alhamdulillah. 
Wow, I'm, I'm sure that's a story for another day. It is, it is. That's an emotional one. So yeah. today we're celebrating the happy uh, Yes, today we're celebrating that, but uh, really we realize mm-hmm. that how important those stories are to tell as no, well. Definitely. Anybody that looks at you now that thinks, um, and I mean, to, not to almost, uh, to, 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 to frame it almost, or to say it almost in facetious, facetious terms, you know, mm. she's popping babies, that's yeah, yeah, the yeah. fear that, you know, <laughs> nobody realizes the story, nobody knows the story yeah. behind that. And, and when we when we started that, but that segment that I mentioned to you now on the journey, Baby Steps, we spoke quite a lot about that in the beginning, you know, infertility mm. and, and, and sort of challenges. And we exactly said that so many of those conversations oh, are so, uh, exactly, mm, exactly. Definitely. And nobody, it, it's stigmatized everybody's afraid of being judged and so it's a matter of ah, things just happened yeah you know um, and and nobody actually has the space to talk about it so inshallah mm. yes uh, on, on another occasion but so when you grew up you, you've done so much you're still quite young you're raising a young family but what were your sort of your aspirations your objectives your dreams when you grew up so alhamdulillah I I um I thought of myself being very um, athletic growing up uh. and um, I enjoyed, uh, let's call it fashion. So uh. I, I, I wanted to sort of merge the two um, and I studied retail, we studied, both of us studied retail business management uh. um, until I actually got into the corporate world. I was like, mm, is this really what I want to yeah. do? And um, having, you know, conversations with people that we studied with, we all sort of went into different sectors um, and then I realized like this isn't actually what I want to do and I it was kind of hard on myself at one point in time and then I realized you know what it's okay like some people only figure out what they want to do later on in life um, and sadly some people never ever mm-hmm. get to figure out what it is that they're actually passionate about so alhamdulillah I'm very grateful for my journey um, I have been in retail or, or in the corporate environment and it's very different. It's worlds apart from what I'm experiencing or what I have been in experiencing at the Fusion in Yamaka Foundation, Alhamdulillah. So I'm very grateful for the journey. Um, and I, just last night, I mentioned about the lessons that I took from corporate and mm-hmm. working, you know, with, with uh, within the different sectors. Um, and I, I can now implement it in my own organization, mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah. So I wouldn't change anything right now. Um, but looking back, I did think, like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I don't want to do. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a cold, it's, it's a been cold, a journey. hard world. I, I imagine, but uh, but I like what you're saying that from every experience that one has, um, that one draws value from yeah. it. Yeah, you no, know, it's it's a completely different environment. Number one, and number two, you interact with with um, let's call it different uh, mindset of people, um, and to merge the two, you sort of end up looking like uh, you you want to be like on your own a mm. little island and then you get labeled and things like that so i think for me it was a, a big um, adjustment at first um, but making that shift away from corporate environment was the best um, decision i could have made alhamdulillah but but a large part of that and now you you you, you can take us through some of that because uh, with a with a fusion in your Mika foundation of course you're a co-founder mm. along with your husband uh, nizam abdul um is is that something that sort of was instrumental in you getting married or was this some, something that let's say that was always there in the back of your mind that something you wanted to at some point pursue do that type of work uh, that mm. type of uh, it, I, and i don't want to call it just community work yeah, yeah. because it's so much more than that yeah to be honest, I think that happened organically uh-huh. um, because when we started the, uh, the the fusion brand, we were both working. So uh-huh. I was working within the, the fashion industry, actually, the online fashion. Uh, and Nizam was busy teaching at the moment. Um, and then we had this passion and then we had this idea and this, this, this great love, as I mentioned, for sport. Um, and we hosted our first event. It was a soccer tournament, I'll never forget, uh, in Seapoint at the Gianluca Viali soccer courts uh-huh. that's just literally on the corner the NC point on the beach front um, and then we were like okay we can do this we work well together we're both passionate about it and then um, we hosted another event uh, it was youth related and then we, we started speaking about it and literally we're like okay we're passionate about events we're passionate about the youth sports so let's fuse it all together and let's come up with a name and then that's how we literally came up with uh, fusion alhamdulillah so 
um no i i we didn't get married like that. <laughs> we um we were married i think for a couple of years and then we naturally we we went into this direction i then gave up my job a uh, full time job and went into fusion it was a very very hard decision yes, because for me um I, I love the independence financially. I love the benefits um, that I was getting, alhamdulillah. So it was a big shift. But um, because we wanted to achieve certain things in life, and you mentioned that we did a lot of things, alhamdulillah, we have, but we also still want to want achieve to do a, a lot. lot. Mm. Um, we feel like there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. And that couldn't have happened if if the both of us didn't make that step, you know. Mm. So alhamdulillah, I'm very grateful for the journey. And um, for the life now that we were able to to sort of interact with different people and different sectors, um, I know that you 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 know that we had the Nabi Yusuf program. Yes. The, sorry, the stage production this past weekend. I think and all of our listeners know because um, we were listening to that ad, and apparently it went very well. At, alhamdulillah, we we account for it as being a success. Alhamdulillah, but we sat after the show, um, and the, so many of the, our cast members that messaged us with heartfelt messages i was literally oh. sitting on my floor sitting on the floor in my room i was crying i was reading the messages and i shared it with with him and i was thinking like the amount of impact that we had on these individuals are far beyond what we actually see um but yeah that's just a little bit of the the impact alhamdulillah and, and i think that's what I, I remember in past conversations with with yourselves um, uh, from the foundation, I and mean, when we're speaking about particular programs, it's exactly that. It's mm. exactly the fact that um, one can never quantify those impacts. One can never quantify what, um, how you just touch somebody at 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 a definitely, particular time. Definitely. So, so to those that actually share the stories with us, we are truly grateful, and we invite them. Although some of them are not uh, necessarily open to share those stories, you know, because we. Fu- or oh, at least my I, I found now that as adults we've become very shy to to share experiences and to share and to let ourselves be uh, let's call it vulnerable in mm. front of others um, but when I look at my children I'm like they're so expressive they're so free to just say what they're feeling and how they, you know they it's obviously to something that you're inculcating even. in them and you're right it's absolutely, it's absolutely a good thing because we need to keep reminding ourselves and our children also that we don't exist in these bubbles 100% we're not islands no you know? no mm. and, and the idea is also not for us to just sort of benefit ourselves, ourselves and, yeah. and, and those immediately within our let's say our familial spaces Definitely. the idea idea is for this to for there to be this knock-on effect and, and and so with that in mind when you speak about the fact that you got married and clearly i mean the, the very fact that um you were drawn to somebody like-minded because i mean the fusion in your makeup foundation is a is is one of the let's say the results of that sort of that that union i mean you can speak about the babies and mm-hmm. so on um for your girls, if you can now, you know, advise them or for anybody listening in terms of, yes, how does one, because that's a huge step also. Mm. Um, you, you spoke a little bit about when you, when you started working and so on. Getting married is a huge, huge decision. It's a huge choice. It's a, well, it's a, it's, it's, it, at the time it feels really, you know, yeah, yeah. You, you don't quite know, but it's, <laughs> you it's so impactful. Know. Yes, it's so you impactful. How, do, how did you know? And and I didn't know, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Although uh, I was very young when I got married, Alhamdulillah. I was only 21 years old. In fact, I turned 21 in November and uh-huh. in December we got married. And there was this saying that people said to me, throw a snippet. Oh, me. yes, I know. And, I've heard I, and I couldn't, like, to me, it just, just was, was words. I didn't understand what they were trying to tell me. I was like... And later on in your in, in in our marriage, I was like, um, why couldn't people just say marriage is extremely difficult? Mm. You know, then I would have understood what they're trying to say to me. Um, but Alhamdulillah, um, I, I wouldn't change anything. Um, I did get married at a very young age, and because of that, I was able to do so many other things. Um, because being in the house, my father never allowed me a lot of freedom. Being yeah. a girl, and and you know, just wanting to protect and and keep that hold over us. Um, but when I got married, Alhamdulillah, I had my husband there, and he was able to to be that protector and just a uh, sort of guide us along life. Um, and and I always say to him or, and to different people that's looking for for a partner, like marriage grounds you, um, and and it's very different to have somebody that you can actually just bounce off. That's in your corner. 
all the time. Uh, maybe I do it too much at times. <laughs> we do it too much, alhamdulillah. Um, but I think it's very important. And now we, we, alhamdulillah, we married for, I think, 16 years this year. Alhamdulillah, 16 years, yes. Is the so, age difference, big age difference between the two of you? Well, he, he makes it seem like it's a big <laughs> age difference, but I'm only six months older than him. So he oh, was literally like so 20. So I like younger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, he is younger. No, one will never say. I thought now that he's quite a bit older than you. And now I, he can <laughs> look daggers wherever he is. I'm not going to comment on that. Because <laughs> a lot of people think that he is older and he ke- this is my thing. He keeps him older keeps, than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, mm. I'll let him have that title for now. I'll yeah. go with uh, the no, being that, the younger one. That is uh, because the first thing when I saw you now is I said to you, I, 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 if I think about the fact that the last time I saw you, you you were um, you were quite far along mm. pregnant mm. With, with baby. And I was saying this is literally months down the line and you look so incredibly well uh, mm, yeah. in studio with us. We have Sadika Abdul. She's a mom. She's a wife. She's also the co-founder of a few Fusion India Miko Foundation and uh, of course as we are talking phenomenal women during this Women's Month and you know what Sarika I, 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 and I was just saying it in a different way this morning uh, when we were speaking on this uh, segment that I mentioned to you this on the journey baby steps that some of women part of what we do is also it seems uh, that according to societal scripts we also need to make things look easy so you also need to juggle all these things and I always say Nobody asks a man who is very accomplished um, and has really sort of done things professionally. How do you manage yeah. children and cooking, mm-hmm. etc., etc.? And as women, we always we, we are always question. asked that question mm-hmm. as if you know what now by default it is. Our and yes, I, yes, and I realize. Look, conventionally, and what we want to do, and this has got nothing to do with saying yeah, uh, women's women's rights, or because oftentimes listeners and even I mean people would now think that one is one is directing the conversation in that in in, in that in, in that direction. But like you said early on, when even when you about working for example so if both partners go out and work professionally and then coming home and then sing to supper and babies being bathed etc etc there's like a whole list of two things to do still at home um and yet we still ask it of one another yeah. you know in terms of juggling even though you are working full-time as uh, as well um i mean how do how do you deal with that the idea that we're supposed to also make things look easy we yeah. often do feel burdened with that, don't you find that? It's, it's, it's tough. Um, I must be honest, and I don't often share this, um, but it, it's tough. I mean, you, you, you're saying that you're just um, supposed to come back and you're supposed to look like normal. and Yeah. Um, Alhamdulillah, I, I'm, uh, I consider myself lucky that my body um, shifted back into space. Alhamdulillah. It's into its place, but... Um, for my mind, it was a major adjustment because mm. now I have a full person, uh, another person that I'm also responsible yes. for and also responsible for the other three now, also interacting with them and managing their, their um, expectations and their needs with another addition because that was also a challenge that I found uh, with, my other, with my baby. Or the and in the meantime, baby, your other, your other roles baby. also as a wife, as a sibling, as a as a daughter of somebody, all of those other roles yeah. are still in place. It's there. It's tough. It's hectic, <laughs> alhamdulillah. The load is heavy. Um, but I, I do think like having a, a support structure helps with that. Um, like I, I always say, the only reason why I'm able to do as much as I can is because of my mother. Alhamdulillah, she is such. A, she plays such an important important role in our life and um, the functionality of fusion like nobody sees her nobody knows that she's there but subhanallah like if my mom wasn't there we wouldn't be able to do how much we do and the type of work that we do in the manner and rate at which we do alhamdulillah Mm. so i'm very grateful for the support system that we do have my sisters as well um so that is in place um but i think in terms of of the the juggling between the two, it is difficult. I, I often fall short, <laughs> uh, I must be honest. Um, but I think that's also normal, yes, you know, as, as a human being. Uh, there is all sorts of different, and especially as a woman, there's all sorts of different emotions that we have um, 
within an hour, I want to say. I'm not even going to go to a full day. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, but it, it, it is challenging. Alhamdulillah, it, it's also just about navigating through that. Um, I do use, like, uh, books, and, and let's call it inspirational um, posts and things that help mm. me get through it from time to time. Um, yeah, but then there's also, like, the little treats, let's call it treats, yeah, yeah, that I do for myself that I literally need to get through this now. Um, like, every day I treat myself to a coffee because I need it, you know, because oh, it's a lovely. full day ahead. And not a cup of um, coffee that you need to make for yourself. 100%, mm. and the froth must be lovely because I need it to taste a certain way, you okay. know, just to satisfy that. So there's little processes that I also do just in able to, to, to cope um, because the load is heavy. And... Um, yeah, we need to make sure that we get through it in one piece. <laughs> yeah, and we need to recognize that we we do the best we can. I, I was just listening to when you said now, um, and it just sort of, it, 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 it's like I, like I wanted to say to you, pause there, pause there. We tend to do this. Mm -hmm. Your words now were in and amongst all of those things you said, sometimes I fall short. Because oftentimes we are the hardest on ourselves. Definitely. We are our, almost our conditioned. Harshest critics. Yes. Definitely. We're almost conditioned yeah. to think a certain way and then um, one wants to come up almost with, with, with excuses or justifications and say, and say to yourself, but the reason I didn't now cook today is because X, Y. But so, so what's wrong with just saying, Not you know what, no, yeah. I, I didn't. <laughs> or tonight there's uh, avocado on toast. And yeah, that yeah, supper, yeah. or these beans Definitely. on toast, or whatever it is, or yeah. it's yalka, yalka in the yalp of <laughs> self. <laughs> self service. I think we, as women, we create that expectations within ourselves. Um, and we do it towards one another as well. We often we impose go. it on one another. On each other, and we sort of have that that um, that expectation, like, okay, so you've had a baby, so now you're supposed to be here, and you're supposed to be there. But everybody's journey is different, mm -hmm. um, and everybody has a different experience, and I think... Um, what we as women should do sh is maybe support each other a little bit more. Absolutely agree. Um, especially like after childbirth, I did a post, um, like a, a lady remembers uh, two things the most in life is one, uh, who was there for her after she gave birth and who was there for her when she lost somebody. Ah. I mean, I thought, yo, this is so profound because those yes. are the two most hectic ex uh, emotional experiences that you go through in life, man, and you need people like to support you and just to be there for you when you need it the most, when you're at your lowest, when you're yeah. at, you know? So Alhamdulillah, it's very, very important that we know that and we can identify that so that we know, okay, this is what yes. I need to be and when I need to be. Yes, it. yes, yes, exactly. It's almost as if f for us, it's often perceived as a weakness. If you if you have a support structure, yeah, yeah, yeah. then it's a matter like of like you're not able to do it. Yeah, all then it's a matter of no, 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 no. But of course, Sadika mm. can cope. She's got a mom. She's got a this. She's yeah, got a yeah, that. Yeah. Whatever. Almost as if you know that in some way negates what you actually do or what you actually put in. Definitely. So yes, we are often too hard mm. uh, on ourselves, and and you're right. I mean, all of our circumstances are okay. different. Everybody heals at a different uh, uh, um, pace. Uh, pace. Mm. But but really important to this is recognizing that we do need that time. Definitely. And there's nothing selfish about it because, I mean, real life, and <laughs> See, as you it. said, it's so beautifully now. I mean, being yeah. responsible for human beings yeah, yeah. Um, is, 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 it it, is it's, a, it's a bigger manner, you mm -hmm. know, and and when you hear like the, the responsibility and the effect that you have on that, let's call it that soul, you want to do your best and you want to make sure. But then you also have the, the different elements that influences you as a person, which results in you know your impact with the child it's just subhanallah it's a knock-on effect it does um yeah it is so make the for me I, I i'm learning i'm doing it <laughs> once i'm on yeah. here <laughs> this morning again on 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 that segment and you have a newborn ba baby uh we learned and uh, there was somebody that messaged us that she, uh, that said uh, she's a granny she's got f uh five kids and, uh, and quite a few grandkids as well and she also never knew that you apparently you can use the breast milk to clean the navel 
because yeah. apparently there's antiseptic yeah, qualities so within is. years mm. with, with within the breast milk yeah. and that even if you have children that have eczema uh, or other skin uh, you know skin, skin ailments yeah. you can actually use the breast milk and so for me it's about that it's oh, about us sharing yeah, stories yeah. about how amazing we are as even, women and as yes, mothers oh, yes and that. even earlier on when you were speaking about um uh of uh, out almost like like if one wants to refer to it as mood swings and when one just feels a certain mm. way it's something i also always remind ourselves well when we when uh, when we speak here on community paths that allah created our bodies like that 100%. you know all of those hormonal changes the fact that we yeah, get to that we yeah. menstruate every month um it, it, it's not something to be joked about mm. in a way which is derogatory not at all because if if we didn't have pms if we didn't get our periods every month if we didn't have these uh, you know up and Function. down with hormones mm. we wouldn't be able to produce that most 100%. sacred of uh, i mean uh, to, to produce Childhood. a human being mm. yes yes and and so um how much more um valued should we feel not or blessed uh, <laughs> should we feel alhamdulillah one of our listeners are asking uh, in terms of the work that you do in terms of when it comes to to fusion in yamiko and so i suppose what let me frame it this way what is a day in the life of sarika abdullah like? <laughs> busy alhamdulillah um but it starts off with getting the kids done in the morning and now for the past couple of months i have had a big adjustment day Um as I mentioned Sofia is not feeling so well so a lot of my time is focused with her so mm-hmm. I had never got good sleep for the past 3 oh. days so now my interaction and, and engagement And Sadika looks fabulous I hope you I wish you could see her I don't know what if if Sofia is well and healthy and if everything is in place how fabulous yeah she's no, I'm going to show you how chubby her cheeks are <laughs> um yeah so that resulted in me spending less time with the other kids in the morning alhamdulillah um but why at school they are at school Um the little one is uh, but uh, fast in the morning and he actually asked me this morning if he could stay at home and I said no my boy you must go to school. Mm. So yeah, get the, getting the kids to school and then we um we need that daily dose of coffee. Of coffee. Yes. Very important. Yes. Alhamdulillah. For my system, uh my partner, uh he'll have a sip of mine but I need that in the morning. That's your spoil. Yes. And then we head off to we literally before we even walk into the office. Um there is so many things that we already ticked off just by looking at our phones. Um this morning I uh, was a little bit different. We had a site visit at the Artscape Theater this morning all the way in town and directly from there we came here now. Um and then later on we'll do a handover with some orphanages inshallah. So It's very busy but alhamdulillah So the site visit I'm assuming is uh was it was another production the, the, the in mind The site visit is with us having an event at the Artscape Theatre oh, I am wow, so excited about huge. that inshallah Um the event um is happening on the 31st of August but I will share all the information with you in the no, we'll chat. chat inshallah No we'll, we must we'll we chat must. we'll we'll, we'll have excited. something yes we'll have something just for fusion in Yamiko um uh, sometime before that inshallah. but then but then th- th- maybe in short just explain to our listeners uh, those who haven't uh, tuned in before that have uh, when we when we spoke to yourself or to Nizam what does fusion in Yamiko do So we are a registered NPO um that focuses on youth development right now when i say youth development i i'm literally thinking of the nabi yusuf stage production that we yeah. just had there um and then we also do humanitarian work and we also do events um just today and yesterday our team is busy packing 50 food hampers um things like that we don't often post on our page um that's the little secrets that we have within <laughs> the community and mm. and and we also want to keep the people's dignity you know yeah. <clears throat> so we packing food parcels and we distributing that a little bit later and then um in terms of our events we have the high school the sheet competition happening next week inshallah so that's huge on huge. fusion's calendar <clears throat> our messages has been ringing and buzzing off the charts like you won't believe it um the last time i checked the tally of the tickets that we have it was on 23 so i'm assuming now that there's probably no more tickets left our combo tickets are sold out you mean then you only had 23 left we are only had 23 tickets sure. left we had no more combo so alhamdulillah very excited about that um and that's happening next weekend inshallah our girls are so excited 
You must see for those, them. I think you for those see. of you that have never attended a fusion in your Mecca Foundation, do yourself a favor and, and, and go to one of them. It is so professionally run. You think mm. you you think you walk in there and you would think these are professionals really that <laughs> that are performing that have put it together um, it, because they are so not only does is the enthusiasm is so evident but how well they are trained and I'm not even going to ask you to yes. divulge your secrets <laughs> in terms of how yeah. you get them trained in that way. But it's so beautiful, Iran. Yeah, if, if I can just share like a little uh, story with Please. you. Like last week and Wednesday, we were at the Joseph Stone doing a dress rehearsal. Myself and Izzam were like totally stressed. Like, oh my gosh, should we cancel? Should we? Because we, we felt that we're probably not prepared. Thursday morning, we had uh, close to 500 kids sit in the auditorium. And they were completely blown away with the performance. And that's how it went from Thursday to Saturday, subhanAllah. So... Our, 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 um, the, the people that we have it's on four board. Four performances. We had three. Three. Thursday, Friday, okay. and Saturday, alhamdulillah. Um, and on Saturday night, they finished it off on such a high level. You would have expected or you would have thought that the performers on stage were professional actors. That's the level at which they executed. And subhanAllah, it's been a, a, a long journey. But they everybody came on the evening and they just give the, gave their best. They sang to the, the best that they could. Um, they performed and it was so overwhelming, subhanAllah. So we, we do a, a lot of effort gets put in. Mm. Um, but when we, see the end, when we see the end result, we're like, okay, this is why we do it. This makes it all worth it. And alhamdulillah. Through the anxiety oh, and the biting of nails. Biting experiences, <laughs> um, meetings with the, oh, it's, it's hectic. Like we even had the venue booked on the same, they double booked. I was like, how do you do that? Like, mm. Alhamdulillah, I just remind ourselves that it's Allah Who's testing us. Who's the calm us. one between the two of you? It's Allah testing us. Uh, the calm one would not be me. <laughs> 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 I must be honest. <laughs> it would not be me. Um, but uh, but I eventually, when uh, the, the wise words does filter down, you know, from the grey beard, Alhamdulillah. Oh, okay. In, Even though he's younger. I do understand. <laughs> <laughs> he asserts yeah. his dominance through the grey beard. 100%. 100%. But, but I, I also wanted to say to you, I suppose, in closing, in our, in our last few minutes um, that that something else that uh, that I suppose for me is so integral for us to realize is how interconnected all these roles are so you are not on a day you know a wife sadika and then on at Never. another hour uh, no. a mother or whatever mm. all of these roles filter into one another and as one gets older also I suppose one wants to really highlight and foreground the one or two things in oneself that one sees could potentially be developed to make one a better version of oneself. Yes. And one wants to work on the qualities that, but you know, don't be yourself, you know what, no, yeah, maybe yeah. I don't particularly, because we want to do the self-work as well. And, and, and for me, part of that is also then thinking about how these different hats and how it's interconnected, etc. So I must say that that the very fact that you have uh, four young children, I mean, Sophia, as you say, she's, she's but a baby. Um, but when we think about the Prophet Sallallahu and how he always reminded us to be of benefit to society, to but how important it is that our children learn that from a young age. Yes. That not on a day all of a sudden, look here, you know, let me sit down, mommy needs to speak to you, and that you need to be, Yo. that's not how it works. <laughs> that's not how they learn. Exactly, I exactly. I keep saying they learn from what they see. Mm. So even though we're saying, go and take this to your father, they, um, they learn from what they see. And, and and often at times we fail to remember that, alhamdulillah. But um, our kids are very, very influential mm. um, and very um, attentive. So they watch all the time. So there are a few days where I do have them at the office. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, see, I know they come with you to the <laughs> events do, as well. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I remind myself that I wouldn't have it any other way because I don't want them um, growing up knowing that we're busy within the community, mm. but we don't have time for them. Yeah. Um, so it's a very, very um, hard point that I drive home, that we both drive home. Like we want them to be with us all the time. Uh, so we'd often um, have them with us at rehearsals, yeah. you know, even after a busy day of work and school and then just have that time there because there's, it's valuable moments that of we course. lose if we don't have that time spent with them and the engagements. With, engagements. And I promise you, um, there's often at times when we stop at a, ra uh, a robot and we, um, we're not giving... 
somebody that's asking for money. My son from the back will say, Mommy, here's the money. Here's something. You know, so Alhamdulillah, I'm very, very grateful for that and that they're also learning to, to be connected to community, to be generous. Um, and it's a dua that we make for them and we ask our listeners also to make dua for us and our kids um, for protection and for, for, for guidance, inshallah. I mean, as we learn from one another and as we are navigating, uh, let's say, sometimes life's complicated a pathway. Sadika, I can't believe that our time has so quickly come <laughs> wow. to an end. We didn't even pick up on the fact that you're a life coach as well and how that also, sort of how you oh, yeah. how you do that <laughs> as well in and amongst everything. But inshallah, yeah. the next time that we speak inshallah. and you are going to be back to tell us all about what is happening, the exciting event that's yeah, happening yeah, yeah. at the Save Arts the date. Game. Save the date, 31st of August. You inshallah. heard it. Right here for the first time, the 31st of August, the next fabulous event from Fusion in your Vico Foundation. Sarika, I'm into those beautiful, beautiful final words that you said, those to us that you made me Allah accept. Amen. And uh, may we keep growing more and more phenomenal women in our community. I mean, shukran so much for the slot. It was really, it was fun being here. I really had a lovely time. It was really lovely having you.